Hello awesome people, what is going on? It is Brad Fusion here and welcome to Elite Dangerous and to all the new pilots out there who just got their game today, welcome to, well, yeah again, welcome to Elite Dangerous and hopefully a lot of you guys are having a lot of fun. So in today's video I'm going to be covering a few basics while showing you guys a few different professions, mostly mining as I didn't really get a chance to show you guys much of that in my Journey to Soul series as I only just got my hauler and I pretty much just headed straight towards Sol, and if you guys don't know what Sol is, that is our solar system that we currently live in, with Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and so on and so forth. I have visited the majority of the planets, uh, other than ones past Jupiter, however, I won't really be worrying about that unless it's really requested that I go see them, but in today's video I'm just going to be focusing on maybe showing you guys a few basic things that maybe not too many new players out there know, or for anyone who hasn't even touched the game, I'm going to be going through a few basics, my control schemes, where the story is, how to do different things, and different professions that you can play in the game, as well as a few of the ships that will probably show up at a few stations here and there that we stop by. And how to kind of, maybe not so much maximize, as I'm not really a professional at the game, I don't really know if you could call yourself one, I'm not really an expert, I should say, at how the game works and how the game mechanics run. I am just talking from my personal experience, and what I find to work for me. There might be better ways to do stuff, and then my uh, my ways might be very inefficient, but it's still my ways nonetheless, and I thought I would give you guys my perspective on the game and how the game plays right now. So right now we are at Abraham Lincoln Station, which is orbiting around Earth. I've gone back to Earth simply because one of you, a few guys want to see the battleship again, and I kind of really do want to show you guys the battleship. But before we head off there, I'm going to be showing you guys the starport services. So this is accessible on majority of stations. However, on some smaller stations, such as the orbital ones, instead of the main uh, stations that we're at right now, they might have limited features such as no commodity market or no outfitting sections and whatnot. So let me go through the basics of the menu right here. So home is obviously what you see right here. This is where you see the station you're in, the federation it's with, your name, your balance, your ship analysis, where you can refuel, repair, and rearm, and then the news of the game, and I'll get to the news in a second. So then you have your munitions, which you can actually see all the ammo you can have. So if you have guns that use ammunition like kinetic weaponry, such as chain guns, rocket launchers, mine launchers, you will buy ammo from here. Energy weapons don't usually use ammo, maybe railgun kind of is a mix between energy and ammunition, so that would actually use rounds, I'm not entirely too sure, I haven't used the railgun myself, but for any ammunition you can buy it here or you can buy it on the main screen just by going down to reload all. Heat sinks and other uh, ch uh, chaff launchers and all that, they come under here as well because they are modules that use ammunition. So then you have the repair screen, this is where you can repair everything individually, or you can just go repair all and repair ship integrity. This just really covers the basics, makes it look a little bit fancier, and even the paintwork you can repair yourself. I do not mind having a kind of a scrappy paint job on my ship. It, it, it looks fine, I think it's wear and tear is to be expected, but everything here is repaired, and if you do get into a combat situation, people can target, and you can target yourself, uh, you can target individual parts of another ship, so you can target their modules. So if you want, you can target their thrusters, target their power plant, target their culprit, hatch, hull, whatever you see listed here, you can most likely target uh, from an enemy's perspective, or target on an enemy if they actually have all these things. Uh, the bulletin board is where you would gather your quest mostly. This is where, if you have available missions, it'll show them. If you have missions that you can, uh, that are available but you can't take them, it'll tell you why when you click on them. And then you have a few other missions as well that you can't do no matter what. Right now there's one available mission to me, and this is to transport Galite to the station, at least three of them, and you'll get 12k credits for it. Galite is, if I'm correct, a mineral or a resource that you can actually mine, so it's a good thing that we're doing mining today. So if we do find three bars of Galite, I can send it in here for 12, so let's accept that, then maybe we'll be able to do that. I'm not entirely too sure, but at least it's a quest that we can do if we do happen to come across those resources. Contact is an interesting one. So this is where you'd go for whether you need a black market. So if you have illegal goods, you can sell them here as well. Or if you want to get rid of any criminal records that you have, you can pay them off at the Pilots Federation. The security office is where you'd hand in your bounty. So if you kill a pirate, if you kill someone who has a wanted status, you will get their bounty. You have to turn in that bounty in an area close by to where you killed the person. That way it still stays relevant. I have a few bounties on me now that I can't hand in because I'm so far away from the system. It doesn't really matter anymore. And the combat bond, I'm not too sure, this might be for those of you who actually focus more so on the combat side of things, so I haven't really explored or delved into this area of the game just yet. 
Let's back out of here and let's go to our outfitting screen. So this is where you can equip your ship with whatever you want to equip your ship with. Right now I have myself a hauler. This is a massive transportation ship mostly uh, and it can be used for mining. Right now I have a very small uh, cargo rack inside of here with only a four capacity though I can upgrade that at the station. So let's go through everything right from the start. So hard points is your weaponry mostly. Weaponry and utilities. So right now I have a small mining laser on the vessel and when you see a blue plus symbol here this means that you can buy something that's suitable for your ship from here. So if I go buy and equip, you can see the currently available weapons and the weapons that I can't buy because I either don't have the credits or I don't have the power. So these ones are here and you can see the stats of all the individual weapons on the right side here and you can compare them if you actually had something to compare it to. I can't really compare it to my laser as my laser is just, well, it's crap. It's, it's literally just a, a mining laser. I, don't, I tried combat with it. It doesn't work out. Don't try that. That was very, very stupid of me. I got down to 20 hull and I got out of there just, just in time to jump and that was rather lucky. So utility mounts usually cover uh, cargo scanners, frame shift, wake drive scanners. This is when if an enemy jumps away from you and you want to see where they've jumped to or follow them, you can use this to see where exactly they were jumping to. Calculate the destination destination of hyperspace jump. So that's yeah, I was just what I was saying. And then you can also get, I can't really see them here, but there's kill warrant scanners as well. This uh, allows you to scan people around you that have bounties on them so you can find them more quickly and so you can get the information on them more quickly so you note that they're wanted without having to sit there for 20 seconds or so waiting for the wanted status to come up. Let's go back into that and utility mount again this is the heat sink launcher that I have. You can get the other heat sink launchers from here and the chaff or shaft launchers they just emit particles so that they can re reflect rockets essentially. Heat sinks are used to cool down your ship in a short amount, amount of time by depositing it all into a heat sink obviously and then you deploy that away from your ship. So you, you can drop your ship's temperature down to I think it's almost 0% uh, and at that point you would most likely be off scanners or if you're flying too close to a sun and you need to cool down extremely quickly so you can sub survive for a little bit longer you can also use a heat sink in that regard. That's what I've been using them for as I do have a fuel scoop that allows me to scoop up fuel from a sun. So let's go on to the internal. So bulkheads are pretty much your armor. You can upgrade this if you have a station that obviously has them. This one doesn't. This one has a power plant or reactor bay that you can upgrade for a little bit more money. This one here is a very high tier one and the higher the tiers the more expensive they are. So you have these few categories that you have to keep an eye on. The mass, the rating and the class. Different ships have different class points on them, as such, for, for example, the hard points, my ship I think has a class 2 hard point on it, and that is it. Other ships, I think it might be class 1. Uh, other ships such as the Eagle might have 1 class 2 and 2 class 1s. This is essentially like, um, slots essentially, so you can't stick one power plug into, you know, a wall across across another country or something because it doesn't match up right. So you have to make sure you have the right classes. The ratings are what you most likely pay attention to. This is uh, the obviously the rating. The better A, B, C, D, slowly going down from that. So A is the best. Obviously C and D is a little bit worse off. And I think you go all the way down to G or H. I'm not entirely too sure. I think right now I have, if I go to compare, I have a rating E. So that's not exactly as low as I was thinking, but it's still not exactly that great either. And you can see that they have a mass weight here. And the mass is the other important thing, as that does increase the weight of your ship, obviously being more mass, and that will then reduce your amount of jump distance and your maximum speed. So down the bottom left here, or down the bottom right, sorry, you notice that I have unladen and current and laden. So this is basically... At my minimum weight, with a low amount of fuel, I can jump at 11 light years uh, jump distance. Uh, at my current weight, I can jump the same, that's what I'm currently at, and when I'm full of cargo, I can only jump at 9.85. So the higher the weight I have on my ship, the less distance I can jump. So that's why I've kind of stripped down my ship as much as I can, getting rid of a lot of things I don't really need, or a lot of things that uh, give me more weight. That way I can jump a little bit further, that's how I got all the way to Seoul using this vessel. So if I go back out of here, you got again thrusters, that kind of what you'd expect them to be. Frame shift drive, this is what you use to go into super cruise or when you do jumping. I'm not too sure what the point of upgrading it is. Maybe you get faster speeds, I'm not entirely too sure. Or even a, a slighter, uh, less charge up time that might be more relevant than what I was thinking. But that there is there nonetheless. Life support is what happens when you either turn off your oxygen in your vessel or when you have your screen on your front of the ship broken, such in combat or whether you've just damaged it so much that the screen breaks. Your character then switches over to using life support and you have a limited amount of time to either repair your ship or you will just simply die. And you obviously you repair your ship at the station so you better be extremely quick about getting to a station if you happen to break your windscreen. 
Power distribution, this is a thing I'll probably explain a little bit later on when I get out to mining and such, because that does involve me having to switch power around on my vessel. Basically, this is where your ship's kind of power source is focused on. So you can focus your power in three different areas or equally in between them all. So you have system, you have weapons, and you have thrusters. And again, you can put three point... I'll, I'll show you guys in a second anyway. Sensors is basically scanning, fuel tanks, you know what fuel tanks are. And then you have internal compartments, which is what basically is refineries, cargo racks, shield generators, fuel scoops, and all of those sort of... If I go by now, you guys can see the hatch break uh, limpet controller. This allows you to open up hatches on enemy ships. So if you've hurt them enough and you can send one of these on their way and you can try to force open the hatch and so on. I'm going to be buying myself a larger cargo rack because this has a capacity of eight, which is amazing. So I'm going to buy that right now. That'll cost me a few mana credits, but I can sell my four capacity one uh, that will give me... So basically it's only 7,000 credits to buy what this currently is. So that allows me to have a lo much larger capacity. I already have a refiner, I'm not going to worry about that too much. That allows me to process the ores we gather from mining. The shield generator, I'm keeping it just so I'm a little bit more protected. This is essentially, you know what a shield is. And you can upgrade these to be a little bit far, uh, a little bit higher and a little bit longer lasting. I believe there is one here, maybe? I'm not too sure. Let me just quickly scroll down. Now this has a lot of fuel scoops and refineries. I don't really need to worry about them too much. And they're really expensive anyway. And then obviously you have my fuel scoop here as well. And the livery is essentially just your customization in terms of colors. A lot of the paint jobs are paid for on the actual Elite Danger store. I bought a package for my haul. So I have all these skins here. You can buy them individually for I think a pound or so. Which is I guess like a dollar or two dollars. Or you can buy a whole pack and you'll get uh, the five skins that you would normally get for buying individual and you get one six special one. That's the six special one. But I'm using the red and white one because I like red and white as a color. Now you also have decals or decals which I don't know whether it depends on what faction you've gone with. Because right now if I go to apply I only had the option of applying a skull. I'm not one for being a pirate like ship so I'm not really going to worry about that too much. But I feel that if you're more inclined or more... Uh, reputable in certain factions you might have the option to use their decals that'd be kind of cool but i'm not going to worry about using a skull on my ship because it might make me look a little bad then you have the shipyard screw which is where you buy your ships from obviously the sidewinder is the basic ship you get in the game and then you have the eagle which is a ship for anyone who is pre-ordered you get one of these in a station near you you'll see it on the galaxy map that i'll show you guys in a second as well the eagle is a good combat ship the sidewinder is a good all-rounder ship the Adder, I'm not too sure, this is a new ship as well. It might be a, no, it's a general utility vessel. And you can see kind of what it functions as by looking at its hard points and internals. So you can kind of see that it's got, oh, it doesn't, oh yeah, fuel tank has eight, cargo rack of four, oh, so it's six in total and so on. So it does seem to be like it's, it's a good all-round ship. And you can see its hard points, it has two utility mounts, two small and one medium. So that's two class ones and one class two, I believe. So it wouldn't be too bad at fighting either, and the cost is only a little bit more expensive than what I currently have. So I could actually upgrade to this, and this would be a little bit, this would be a lot better than my current ship. And I think it's jumped since it doesn't actually say, does it? I don't think so, but I actually wouldn't mind getting this. This might be my next thing to save up for, as that is only 87,000, and I think I'm up to 50,000 or so right now. 57,000 right at the top. So I only got to get another 30,000, and I might do another video once I finally get the adder. And then you have, obviously, oh, well, you go back around. So different stations sell different ships. You have to keep an eye on what uh, stations have in stock if you're looking to buy a ship. And also the outfitting screen is also the same as well. Whereas you need to find stations that actually serve what you need. As some stations might not have the resources. That's why there wasn't so many pluses against a lot of the things. As the place just didn't ha seem to have a lot of them. So that wasn't really something I could have bought. And maybe if I went to a different station they might have, the have them there. Sorry about that. Now, the commodity market. This is where a lot of you traders would go if you were to become a trader. The most important thing you have to worry about here is the demand, the supply, and the galactic average. The galactic average is the price that the object would sell for all around the galaxy, essentially. Now, this fluctuates depending on the demand and the supply of the station. If a station is in high demand for something, say this is on medium demand right now, where a bit of clothing would normally sell for around about 287 this place is willing to buy it from you for 443 so that's definitely a profit so if you find a place that has a high supply of clothing you can buy it there for maybe 
50 credits or 100 credits and you can sell it here for a massive profit that is how a lot of the sales work so this place seems to be in high demand of everything but they have high supply of buyer waste which means you can buy it from here for 46 credits or sorry for 11 credits oh wait no 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 sorry i was reading that wrong you can buy it from here for 14 credits and you'll have to average is 46 so you might find a place that really wants it but you can sell it for maybe like 50 80 or so credits so yeah you can see how this works it might take a little while to understand i had to figure it out but it is in that regards pretty basic so this place is in high demand of a lot of metals and where we're going today has a ring that has a lot of metal components on it which if i look around it suddenly really accepts a few things here so gold palladium uh platinum and silver and the year the quest for galite as well so if i find any of these i'll most likely keep them and bring them back here where i can make a decent really decent profit on these as like i said galactic average how much do you buy for so very much worthwhile keeping an eye on this stuff and i really really want to bring some stuff over here so we'll back out of here and i think that is it you had the universe all uh cartographic uh, cartographic how do i say that cartographics or cartographics i guess is how you say it so when you choose to be an explorer you most ships anyways come with equipped with a discovery scanner and that allows you to fly around certain systems uh that haven't been explored yet and when you emit this as scanning pulse and you'll see me doing this in the journey to solar series it'll emit a, pul a pulse out and it will scan for any astronomical objects and once you find them you then have to fly towards them and s kind of sit within radius of them staring at them allowing your scanner and your ship to receive the data once you've received enough data you don't really have to scan everything in the system you can just scan a few things if you want and then when you take this back to a station, you can actually sell it for a fair amount of credits. So here are two systems that I was scanning on my way from journey from my spawn to Sol that I actually forgot to hand in. There was one system that was closed by I handed in for about 2k credits. So this is probably where I scanned maybe a star and a planet or so. And I think the same for both of these actually. The more things inside a system and the more things you scan or even the higher or the better scanner you have, the more details you get so the more money you get as well. So if you want to focus on exploration you can do that. There's a whole galaxy out there and you might be wondering or might be a little bit worried that maybe everyone has explored everything first. Let me show you guys the galaxy map just so you guys have an understanding of what there is to explore in this world right now. So right now we are at Sol. This is our galaxy. This is our solar system. This is where we have a quest to go. That's why you see the little globe icon there as well. And this is the system so we can go to Uranus. All the green lines here, or sorry, all the blue lines, is essentially our jumping distance. So if there isn't a line connecting it, we can't jump to it. So right now I can't go from Sol to Sirius as there isn't a, a jumping distance there. I, my ship can't jump that far. Large ships, uh, ships with better jump drives, they can jump a little bit further, obviously, or ships that weigh a little less than mine they can also jump a little bit further. But right now, this is just a small area around Earth that we can jump to. Let's zoom out a little bit more so you guys can get a better understanding of the map right now. So in my Journey to Soul series, I actually passed a place called Capella, which is all the way out here. So it's just a kind of understanding of how far we was traveling. This is like the midway point of my, des uh, of my travel as well. Uh, and if you go all the way back here, I think I can probably find it all the way back. I think it's not... Oh, maybe it is up here somewhere. No, that's going all the way away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going a little bit further away than I was expecting myself to go, but it is, it is somewhat, oh, wait, I found Zach, I think I found it, actually, it's all the way, if I can actually move the map around, up here, it should be up here somewhere, at least I, I could be very, very mistaken, no, there it is, I found my starting spot, this is where I spawned in the world, thank god I found that without spending too much time doing that, but yeah, this is where I started in the world, you can tell this because this is where I left one of my first ships that I got, this is the Sidewinder, I left this at this place so that when I finally got to Seoul, I could look back and say, this is where I came from, and this is where I am, because I just couldn't remember the name of it. But uh, let me just jump between these locations. Let me set this as my destination, so now it has a little icon there. So now when I go to my navigational tab, you can actually uh, see my current location and select the location. So if I click on the little uh, play button here, it'll actually take me all the way to where we currently are. So that is how far I've traveled in my journey to Soul series. This took me about six episodes or so to get there, so I'd say maybe about a few hours or so. Uh, and I was messing around as well. I wasn't directly flying straight to Seoul. Like I could have, but I wanted to have a little bit of fun whilst I was doing it. So this is just one example of where you can go and where you are. You can also search for system names as well. So if you know of a certain system, uh, you can just search it. So if I want to search, for example, if I go into enter system name and I go Erinin, which back during the beta was your spawn location, that is all the way over here. Erinin, Ibutis, Elwin, this is all the place I remember. I used to love going to this place. And you have Dahan, Mordor, uh, Morgor, sorry, and you have Word, which is a very, very fancy station. 
Anyways, this is just one part of the places we can go, so you don't really have to worry about exploration too much or people having scanned all the planets or all the systems, because if I zoom out, there's a lot more than you're thinking. There's a whole galaxy out here for us to explore. And you want to see how, how many systems there are? Let them go all the way over here, because you can navigate the map. Right-clicking allows you to go vertically, in a sense, vertically. And if you hold down right click and then go left click, you can actually scroll around the map like so. So let me zoom in on the center here, at least a little bit more denser area, just so you guys can see how many stars there are. Let me zoom, just zoom, zoom a little bit more. Oh, there's a few stars. A few more stars. A few more as well. These, none of these have been scanned. At least as far as I can tell, not all, no, I don't think anyone would have scanned all of these. But you can see how much there is in this game. And I'm still scrolling in and you can see that there's more and more. How cool would it be to go out to the, like an area like this? Seriously. Oh, I didn't mean to click on one of them. I think I just did. Whoop. There we go. I clicked on one of the stars here. But still, this amount of density, there's definitely a lot of money in exploration if you want to put into the time into looking for decent and awesome systems. Now, the stars do vary, obviously, as they would do in real life. And this is kind of where they got a lot of their data from, as they kind of use scans and telescopes to kind of map out what we currently know about certain systems and whatnot. So if I go back out to, let me go back to where we came from, that's just, that, that looks so cool. <gasps> that is a pretty star. Can I please click on that? Please somebody clicked on that. Holy crap, that is one massive star. That looks so cool. I really kind of wish I could go all the way out here, but I can't and that would take far too long to get all the way out there. As you guys, what the hell was that? Was that just really close to my screen? Uh, it was, okay. I thought it was another massive, massive star. It, it is massive, but I thought it was a little bit larger than what it currently is. But yeah, so this is the whole galaxy we, ha we have access to, which is a lot. Now, I've heard about people getting outside of the galaxy, in a sense, of to where, uh, if I can find them. Oh, there's little nebula here and there. I've heard people get to them. I myself haven't. Wow, that's just laggy as hell. Um, there's a lot of detail in here. Uh, but yeah, I personally haven't gone towards any of them. I've been tempted to, but I haven't really had much of the time. There's one nearby called the Cul-Sac, which I think looks really cool, but um, whether or not I'll be able to get to it, I have no idea. Anyway, I've been rambling on for far too long about how the game's functionality is, so let me actually show you guys some of that. So, I'm going to go to the surface, now I'm going to go to a system I had in mind, which is the, if I can show it down here, Bernard Star. This system has a decent mining place, at least I'm hoping it has. It has a very metallic area, which I really want to show you guys. So let me go to launch, and I'll get, give you guys the basics of the controls as well. So down the bottom of my screen here, one, you'll notice the docking or the landing um, icon or the landing HUD right down there. That's kind of showing you where I am on the landing pad. And once I get out of here, you guys will see my ship lift up off of it. This is to help navigate so people can easily land without having to kind of look in their blind spot. So there we go. You can see my ship taking off and so on. I'm going to press insert to bring in my landing gear. Like so, the lady agrees with me. So right down the bottom there, next to mass lock, landing gear, cargo scoop, you'll notice something that says system, engine, and weapons. This is the power management or power distribution that I was talking about before. So if I press my left arrow key a few times, you'll see I'm putting blips or little energy markers into system. And you can put, you can max out them by putting four blips in each, but you can only have six blips in total. I'm guessing maybe if you buy larger power distributors, you might have more points in total. But right now I only have currently uh, that of six. So I, I can put in three blips into each of these and I should be a little bit fine. But engines, if you put all your blips in engines, that allows you to fly to your maximum capable speed with your current vessel. All the energy into weapons allows you to reduce the cooldown time on a lot of your weapons and uh, energy into systems that allows your shield to regenerate a little bit faster. And I'm not too sure what else the system actually does. It might decrease cooldown times on a lot of your mechanics. But I'm going to put a lot of energy into my system, uh, into my engine so I can fly a little bit faster. So let's head out of here. There's a big ship I think is either coming in or leaving. I can't tell. I think he's leaving actually. Uh, yeah, he's leaving. That is a... I think that's a lack... No, it's a python. <gasps> python. Uh, wait, red, red, red. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. The python is probably one of the biggest ships in the game uh, that, that you can actually acquire and play. So this is a good demonstration so you guys can actually see that. The python is an amazing vessel. It looks so cool. And it... Oh, God, don't fly away from me. I'm trying to look at you. <laughs> oh, well. The python is an amazing ship. If I can save up to get the python, I will get the python. The Python is just a must-have, essentially, for those of you who love massive ships. And the reason why you hear frameshift charge detected is because he was about to jump. And I think he just did. 
Maybe? Not yet. I think he will. In any second now, you'll see him just disappear and go poof into space. So right now in front of me, you'll see Earth. It's currently still, uh, blackened out because the sun's on the other side. That's our sun right over there. So what we're going to do, we're going to lock back onto Bernard Star and we're going to engage hyperdrive. I'm currently mass locked because I'm too close to the station. So mass locking essentially means that when you're too close to a station or a large entity such as a planet, a sun, or a, again a station, it will slow down your ship it kind of like it has a gravitational pull. That's why it's called mass lock because you're locked to that mass of that object. Now once you fly out of it you'll see the mass lock icon down the bottom there go away. That now means that I can jump successfully without having to worry about being uh, slowed down or anything. This also affects your super cruising state that I'll talk to you about once I get out of my hyperspace. So let's turn around, let's look at Binant Star and let's engage our hyperdrive and you guys can see it either for the first time or well for many times before. So let's have a jump and I'll see you guys in a second. So I'm not going to lie, jumping in this game is beautiful. So you can't really do too much when you are jumping as, well obviously you're going through hyperspace so you can't really control too much of your ship. Your ship kind of uh, locks up when you do it. It, it kind of, it, I guess because it's emitting a high amount of energy, your ship goes a little bit funky and whatnot. Anyways, we are at Bernard Star, so let's look at our system map so you guys can get a better understanding of how the system actually looks and where we're currently going to go. So this allows you to see the system from a kind of like a top-down perspective in a sense, or like a... I guess a system view, essentially. So right at the start, we have a star or an A belt, which is just an asteroid field. Which, if you look over here, you can see that it has a. It, it's. Oh god damn! I was looking at the map. Okay, interdiction. This is what happens when either a police person or a bounty hunter or whatever. They can essentially pull you over in space using an interdictor. So this kind of like grabs onto your ship, and you can try to escape it if you've got the skills to which I currently don't because I'm just doing so terribly. And that'll allow you, them to bring you out of high, uh, out of Super Cruise. Lung to them, either scan you, and he is... He's got no shields. Why is he attacking me? He is wanted. Okay, yeah, he is wanted. So he's going he's gonna to kill me, essentially. Unless I can escape from him. So... Let me talk about the professions in the game that you can talk, uh, that they can take uh, the role of anyway. So obviously I've mentioned trading being one of them and mining being another. Those are pretty big payouts as well and you can also become a bounty hunter which essentially is you hunt down people like these guys, people that are wanted. Uh, this guy is mostly harmless but I don't have any weaponry on me to take him down so I'm not really going to worry about him, I'm just going to fly away as fast as I can and jump back out when I actually have the chance to which is now. Now you can take the role of being a pirate, which essentially means that you attack in, uh, innocent people or people like myself who might actually have cargo on me. This will reward you with a fair amount of money if you sell the items to a black market, obviously, as you would kind of expect. So let me quickly lock on to one of the belt clusters here, like so. And I'll go over there and I'll do a little bit of mining whilst talking to you guys about a few other roles. So there's, again, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do in this game. From yeah, mining, trading, bounty hunting, becoming a pirate. You can even help out in the wars by becoming a soldier. There are different events going on in the game. Uh, and at the start, when I was looking at my station hub, you notice the news tab. The news tab is kind of the hub of where everything interesting happens, essentially. So if there's an event happening around the world, or around the galaxy, you can read it there. And if you want to, if you're close enough to, you can actually go participate in that event. So right now there is a massive drug bust going on in a certain system and you can be on the police side of things I'm guessing where you essentially have to stop criminals who are trying to escape with those drugs where they could make a massive amount of money on the black market. So you can become one of those officers or one of those soldiers who are killing them for their bounty essentially and getting a fair amount of money in that regard or you can be one of those who are actually basically taking the drugs and making a profit in that way. So you can kind of, I don't know how to, how to really word it, players make the players, uh, I guess, write the, no, write the stories, 
the game itself gives you the stories, the players are the ones who write the ending to the stories, essentially. Uh, and there is an overarching story to the game as well, in the sense that the Emperor of the Galaxy is dying, and all of the three large factions are fighting over who gets to, basically, who, who gets to be in control. So there's a war outbreaking between the four factions, or sorry, the three factions, which you can see over here, which is the Federation, the Empire, and the Alliance. Uh, there's all smaller alliances here. You have the Bernard Star Alliance, which is just a small uh, federation here. And you have the Events Corp, which is also a federation. Then you have the Star Crimson Society, which is an independent. And you can see so on for this uh, current system. But uh, right now we're going to be doing a little bit of mining. So to mine, you need a mining laser, you need a refinery, and you need to find, an, uh, obviously, an asteroid that has metal on it, or just something worthwhile. Uh, mining from icy rings or planets that have an icy ring around it won't really yield you anything, but ones that have rocky rings, ones that have metallic rings, those is where you get a lot of your resources. So let me bring out my mining laser here, and let me start mining away at this asteroid to see if we'll get anything worthwhile. So I'll follow my laser for a few seconds, and after a few seconds you'll notice a little bit of ore drop out. Let me slow down here so I don't fly into it. There we go, so we have a uh, lephodidite, I can't say that right. If I press my home key, I open up my cargo scoop, and now essentially down the bottom left of my screen you'll notice a little cargo, uh, like a little rectangle there, with a little bit of an ore in the middle of it. I have to line this up uh, to successfully collect the cargo, so I'll be flying towards it very slowly, trying to keep it in the center of my crosshair there, where once I actually get it, like so, there we go. I have now collected said material. So now I go over to my cargo, and you'll see that I have two resources inside of this, um, Lefendite and uh, Uranonite. I, I really can't read these names, my apologies. Now I can choose to process one, either, both, or none of these in my refinery bins. So my refinery right now has two bins in it, you can see empty down the bottom there, the two empty slots. This allows me to assign a material to them, so if I want I can assign, uh, say I'll assign this to this, and that, that gives me 4% of that being refined, and I can vent out the other one. So now, whenever I connect uh, some of the lepidolite, lepidolite, le lepidolite, I I can't read that. But once I collect more of that, it will automatically refine, and that percentage will slowly increase. Once it gets up to 100%, it will give me one full bar of that resource that will then go into my cargo bay, where my capacity right down below is eight. So one full bar obviously takes up one capacity. So I'm going to be doing a little bit more mining here or maybe on a different asteroid. So there are a few asteroids that give you different resources, and a tip for anyone else there who wants to begin mining, when you have chosen what resource you want to get, stick to that asteroid, because if you start flying around there's a high chance you'll forget what asteroid you've been mining from, and you'll just never be able to get that resource back again, because different asteroids have different resources. So for me flying away from this one, it's probably a pretty stupid move, but I'm not really too interested in the materials I've currently gotten from those systems. So I'm going to be thrusting up now, if I can thrust up, I actually can't. Oh wait, is it because of my cargo scoop? It works with my cargo scoop, and now I can thrust up and go a little bit faster. Okay, there we go, and now I can slow down, and then bring out my mining laser here, and do a little bit more mining on this asteroid here. Bring out my cargo scoop like so, fly backwards, do a little bit more mining here, and hopefully we'll be getting some decent resources from this one instead. So what do we get today, game? Be generous please. Okay, so that then, you'll notice my mining laser has actually overloaded because I didn't have too many pips or too much energy in my weaponry. So if I press right on my uh, arrow keys, I'll put a little bit more energy in that and that will then increase the cooldown time or decrease the energy cost of using my mining laser. So now you'll notice it'll last a lot longer than before. And this gives me indite, which I'm not too sure what I want, but it might have another resource inside of it that will be worth a little bit more. Hopefully, I'm looking for gold, but there's a chance I might not get that today. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit of mining after I pick up this resource here. I want to see if it's actually got anything worthwhile talking about. Uh, but okay, there. So that contains just simply indite. So I'm going to I'm going to actually collect that indite, and we'll actually get a few more bars, and then I'll skip to when I'm done here, and we'll be heading off to a system to actually sell them. And that should do it for today's video, as I've covered the basics of how the game works, the professions you can take, the story that the game has, and uh, everything else as well. So, I will see you guys in a second. I will fast forward this segment so you guys can still see me doing it, but I won't be commentating over it, and you guys will enjoy some nice music, hopefully.
Okay, so just quickly I wanted to talk, talk to you guys about a resource I just found. So just mining this asteroid, it gave me Galite. Now if you guys remember right at the start of the video, I ac actually accepted a quest to retrieve three uh, three tons of Galite. So luckily for me, I've actually found that resource. So I'm going to actually process this and process the Uranonite because that's, only, that's the only thing that this asteroid will give me, I believe. So I'll be resuming that and hopefully after this I'll be able to make a decent profit because of the quest I've gotten, which is this one here. So yay for me, we'll be able to receive a decent amount of cash. So I'll see you guys in a second once I've finished mining this for what it currently has. So this is kind of cool guys, I actually found an AI that is actually doing some mining here. I wasn't expecting this, I normally haven't really seen AI do anything other than dog fighting, so that's kind of cool. I think they're leaving now because I've locked onto them, but I just wanted to have a look at you. Don't fly away. I wonder if I can say hello. I am playing solo by the way, you can choose to play online if you want, or you can choose to play solo, which is still connected online, you just don't have to worry about seeing other players here. Oh, you look so cool. So this is the new ship as well, this is the Type 7 transport, this is a mid between the Type 9 and the hauler essentially, and it actually looks really cool as well. So this is an AI doing some uh, mining here. Again, really nice looking ship actually, it's kind of, it looks a little weird to begin with, but yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of nice looking. I wonder if they're leaving now, I'm not too sure. Again, still kind of cool. And you can actually see, by the way, when they do deploy their hatch, you can actually see when their hatch is open. She doesn't have a hatch open right now. At least I'm saying it's she because of the name. But I could be completely wrong in guessing that. But uh, let me actually have a look around here. That That's that's kind of a, a, a cool little um, cool little picture right there, actually, I think. The AI doing some mining and everything. And I think, if I'm correct, you can actually see the hatch open. Maybe, maybe not. Uh... They seem to open up the hatch at the last second, which is something that I don't do. I usually leave my hatch open. Oh, well, I'm going to do a bit of mining, see what she's actually getting from this. Maybe maybe there's something worthwhile here. Maybe I'm stealing, stealing this person's resources, but still. What do, what do, you, can, what do, you, what do you have from here? This is uh, something I'm not really interested in gathering, but I'll still have a look at it anyway. Maybe there's something else worthwhile here that they're getting. Okay, and that give me only, yeah, only something I'm not really interested in, so yeah, no thank you. So anyways, I might leave today's video here, hopefully for anyone out there who hasn't had a chance to play the game yet, you have a little bit better of an understanding of how this game plays and how this game functions, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's video as I, again, have done a little bit more mining as I never really got a chance to really show that off or to show you guys any of that. So it was a little bit of fun, I didn't get all the resources I wanted to get, I got a little bit of indite here and I've gotten so close to finishing my galite but I don't think I'm going to be finding anything else in this system. So again, hopefully you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you guys did like today's video, feel free to give a like. And if you guys want to see more of the dangerous or more videos in the future from myself, feel free to click that subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching, and stay awesome, everyone.